Good morning, Anand colleagues. Can you hear me? Good morning. You are welcome. Wonderful. Uh, yes. You, you can you're see highly, video. You're highly, welcome, you're highly welcome to the program. Um, in another six minutes, we will commence and then we do yeah. proper introduction. You are highly welcome. Wonderful. You can tell me when I should start. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it very clearly. Wonderful. So I will yes, be very, waiting for you. Thank yes. you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You are highly welcome. I want to use this opportunity to welcome you to the third edition of the free seminar organized for members. On behalf of the president of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria and the chief executive officer, I welcome our guest speaker, uh, Otter Prisklow, the CEO, the chief executive of PAFA. Without wasting time, I will hand over to the chief executive of the of National Accountant of Nigeria to welcome our guest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope I'm uh, audible. Um, the president and chairman of council of Anand, Dr. James Ekara Neminebo, council members who have already joined, uh, my professional colleagues. Um, let me this morning welcome each and every one of us to this uh, webinar. Uh, they'll be having talking to us today um, on accountants for people, planet, and prosperity. This is actually a signature topic of uh, Alta Prislo. Alta Prislo is the chief executive officer of the Pan African Federation of Accountants, PAFA, the umbrella um, association for all professional accountancy organizations in Africa. Uh, before being the CEO of, uh, Pan Af of PAFA, Arthur Prislow was the Chief Operating Officer, COO, of the International Federation of Accountants. And so she's come with a lot of experience um, in, in accountancy and, of course, in the um, administration of PAOs. I want to thank you, uh, Alta, for agreeing to speak to us. This is going to be the first of the episode that we're going to be having with you. I will be having more engagement with you so that our members can know more about the Pan-African Federation of Accountants and uh, what you do. I want to say thank you very much for coming. I want to thank everyone who has already joined. And we know that many people are still uh, continuing to join. Thank you very much. I wish us a very good um, interaction this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Kaori. <laughs> And let me use this opportunity. Uh, please, just... see you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to welcome you in. Please, you. please. My, my, you. President, my president will also be welcoming you. <laughs> uh, my dear council members of Anan, the chief executive officer, and all members who have joined this webinar, um, our dear resource person, Alta, it's truly a pleasure uh, to know that you are going to talk to us this morning on a topic accountant for people, planet, and prosperity. Um, having known Alta for this long, we know that she has interacted with all standard setters and been involved in accounting um, profession over, over the time since we have known her. And for us to come and talk about accountants for people, uh, it goes to show that Yes, we are going to benefit so much. Like we all know, accountants in Africa, we are in, adopted um, in the integrated accounting. Integrated accounting is purely to now know the components of uh, labor that contributes to profits. Profit is not just made for the company, for all that contributes. That's integrated accounting. Today, we are going further to environmental accounting, to sustainability accounting. And today we are going to hear more on accountants for people, planet, and prosperity. To what extent in your reporting do you consider 
the environment, the persons who contribute to profits, the environment, and sustainability. Besides that, what about the other stakeholders? These are the things that Alta will talk to us today. Alta, you are most welcome, and we are prepared to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. James. So um, let me start first by thanking uh, Dr. James, the Vice President, the CEO, for this opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I'm really delighted to be here. I had an opportunity many years ago uh, to visit with Anan. Um, I was privileged to also go to your School of Accountancy, which now I believe is a, a university. And I have always been inspired by the vibrancy of Anand's membership. And for that reason, I am delightful to be with you again today. Today, I wanna to talk about accountants for people, planet and prosperity with a real focus on you as the members of Anand. And I wanna tell you what you already have uh, that makes you an accountant for people, planet and prosperity, and maybe address a few additional things that you might look out for. So let's start. Um, and let me know if at any time you cannot see my screen or you cannot hear me. So for me, accountants for people, planet and prosperity are members of an effective professional accountancy organization. And you can see here on the screen, I have already given Anand a big tick for an effective professional accountancy organization. Now, what do we mean? What do we mean by an effective professional accountancy organization? So like a nun, it delivers or supports quality accountancy professionals like yourself, you who further the quality of governance, financial management, reporting and auditing. And all of this in turn promotes growth and development in the public and private sectors. It enhances transparency and accountability in the use of public resources, improves the design and delivery of vital public services, enhances the effectiveness of development assistance, and attracts foreign direct investment. So let me pause there for a moment. This, <clears throat> in the privity of an elevator speech, is really saying how you, as a member of Anand, is contributing to a better Africa, and to a better world. Now, what do we mean by an effective professional accountancy organization delivering members with such a capability? Well, like a nun, it is sustainable, it is relevant and credible. So I wanna start off with you as a member of your organization, we're going to go continental and we're going to go international and we're going to go into specific topics, but let's ponder for a moment longer a nun. What does it mean to be sustainable? Your professional accountancy organization, which of course is a very valued member of the Pan-African Federation of Accountants, Anan is one of our largest five organizations. And these five organizations together represent more than 80% of accountancy professionals on the continent. And you are part of that, right? Your organization is recognized in your jurisdiction. It has a strong governance. It has effective management, human resources, infrastructure. It has a strategy, a compass that directs it. It's financially viable. And it has sufficient professional and intellectual capacity to serve the public interest. And none is also relevant. It serves accountancy professionals at all levels, foundational, intermediary, and advanced. Most important is the key role that you are playing in the public sector. So you are one of very few professional accountancy organizations on the continent that serves both accountancy professionals in the public sector and the private sector. And we also find that Anand is responsive to the needs, expectations, and interests of its stakeholders, like yourself, the members, and as I've already said, is really regarded as a trusted advisor to business, government, and society at large. And I can really um, testify to that because during my visit, um, I've been on a few years or already some many years ago, 
I was so privileged to really uh, meet with senior people in business, senior people in government, and um, showcasing your reach. And you have you should be very proud of that. Lastly, an effective professional accountancy organization like Anan is credible, right? It facilitates initial and continuous professional development like this virtual interaction that we're having today. It requires you to act ethically and with integrity. It does a lot to promote the adoption and support the implementation of the international standards for education, ethics, reporting, auditing, and assurance. And it drives the quality of accountancy services through effective processes for quality management and investigation and discipline. So you, as an accountant for people, planet, and prosperity, is a member of an effective professional accountancy organization. So let's move from the national level to the continental level. And today I want to talk about Anand's membership of PAFA, as well as Anand's membership of IFAC, because I think the individual members of professional accountancy organizations such as Anand do not always understand the benefits to be derived from being connected at a continental level and being connected at an international level. So let's for a moment talk about you as an accountant for people, planet and prosperity, being connected at the continental level through Anand's membership of PAFA. And you can already see, I give you a big ticket, a big, big tick uh, for Africa. I want to talk to you a little bit more about PAFA. So we are the regional representative of the accountancy profession in Africa, and we are recognized as such by the International Federation of Accountants. We have 56 member organizations in 45 countries, and I've already shared with you the important role that Anand plays as one of PAFA's largest five members. Our vision is focused on people, on, on, on accountants for people, planet, planet and prosperity. It's focused on value creation. Value creation to benefit the citizens of Africa. And how do we do that? We do it through strengthening the capacity and the influence of the accountancy profession in Africa to enhance trade, the quality of services and trust in institutions. And we'll talk more about that. A little bit more about us. I'm not going to go uh, in detail through these strategic objectives, but I do want to look at um, the economical and societal benefits to be derived from these strategic objectives. One is, for example, effective and sustainable PAOs. So we do a lot on the continent to make sure that every country in Africa has an effective and sustainable PAO like Anand. We work to increase the trust in and influence of the accountancy profession as a partner of, of choice. We also want professional accountants to be recognized and to be relevant and known for their ethics, the value they bring and the quality of their services. And of course, as I've said earlier, once you perform in this way, you will deliver reliable, comparable, and timely organizational reporting, which supports effective decision-making. And all of that contributes to transparency, accountability, and governance in the, good, in, in the public sector. So our strategic objectives are really aiming to render those benefits. And they are very closely linked to the AU Agenda 2063. So when we look at the seven aspirations in um, of the AU Agenda 2063, there are really some very close links, right? So we link to, for example, one where we talk about inclusive growth and sustainable development. In three, good governance. In five, the focus on ethics. In six, the development um, of an Africa that is people-driven, and seven, an Africa as a strong, united, resilient, and influential global player and partner. And here we can also say the accountancy profession in Africa as a strong, united, resilient, and influential continental 
and global player and partner, right? So really talking again towards how you, as an accountant for people, planet, prosperity, through your connection with PAFA, can, can contribute to the AU Agenda 2063. And then of course, there are also direct links with the, um, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So let's move to the global level. And let's talk uh, for a moment about accountants for people, planet and prosperity connected at the global level through Anand's membership of the International Federation of Accountants. And this kind of seem a little bit abstract at the moment, but later on when I get into a more detail, you will see how you can really harness this connection to your benefit and to grow as an accountant for people, planet and prosperity. So a little bit more about the International Federation of Accountants. Here we are talking about a global organization for the accountancy profession, but, but look and see how it comes back again to what Anan also strive towards, right? So it's working with its member organizations to ensure the skilled, knowledgeable, and ethical workforce of professional accountants around the world. It contributes to the development of sustainable private and public sector organizations, and it supports strong financial markets and economies. So in the case of IFA, globally, it has more than 180 member organizations in more than 130 jurisdictions, representing more than 3 million professional accountants. So, so sit back for a moment and think about you as an accountancy professional and member of ANAN. So as a member of ANAN, you are now also, through ANAN, a member of a community of accountants of more than 120,000 in Africa, right? And through ANAN's relationship, partnership with IFAC, you are now also connected to accountants in more than 180 organizations, 130 jurisdictions, part of 3 million accountants globally. So I really wanted to use this um, opportunity today to help you understand and to emphasize the importance of Anan continuing to be part of the continental profession and continuing to be part of the global profession. Now, what does IFAC's membership bring? Well, Anan being a member of, of IFAC now is recognized globally as a high quality professional accountancy organization. So that means you, as I've said earlier, is are, are members of, of Anan, which is really recognized globally as high quality, right? It makes it clear to public and private sector organizations locally, regionally, and internationally that the PAO is sustainable, relevant, and credible. And we already spoke about it. So this IFAC membership is really giving you that stamp of quality, right? Saying that your member organization, Anan, is sustainable, relevant, and credible. And then membership of IFAC also demonstrates Anand's commitment to and expertise in international standards, best practices, and serving the public interest. So let's, let's move beyond Anand, PAFA, and IFAC, and then start looking at you, the individual. So accountants for people, planet, and prosperity lead on sustainable, sustainability reporting and assurance, right? So I really like the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs report and the 2023 report was recently published. And it has really um, interesting data and the shift that I'm seeing from prior reports is actually how sustainability is featuring to a much greater extent in the 2023 report, right? And throughout this presentation, I'll highlight a few data sets uh, for you that I think is really um, relevant to us as professional accountants, right? So according to, to the report, the largest job creation or destruction will come from environmental, technology and economic trends. And we're going to look at technology a little later. So for now, let's just focus on the environmental aspect. So the strongest net 
job creation, because the good news, what you will see later is, although there is job creation and job destruction, there is actually a net creation, right? The strongest net job creation is driven by investments, facilitating green transition and broader application of ESG, environmental, social and gov governance standards. And climate change adaptation also rates high as a net job creator. The fastest, fastest growing roles are driven by technology, digitalization, and look at that, sustainability, right? So this report looks at 2023, and then it looks ahead five years to 2027. So when I present these data sets, think about what is going to happen over the next five years and how that is going to affect you as an accountant for people, planet, and prosperity, right? So I wanted to emphasize the, the important shift in this future of jobs report now looking at sustainability or ESG, right? So let me bring you to the profession and particularly a call to action from the International Federation of Accountants. And here is an extract. With the establishment of the International Sustainability Standards Board, the way forward is clear. The accountancy profession must lead on climate reporting and other material ESG disclosures and their assurance, contributing to strong and sustainable financial markets and economies and enabling the UN's SDGs, All right? We must lead. And I wanna commend Nigeria because when I look at the ISSB, and you will know that they have issued um, the first two IFRS sustainability disclosure standards, S1 and S2. So Nigeria is one of the first adopters of the IFRS sustainability disclosure standards in Africa. So you should feel really proud. But my question to you today is, how ready is the accountancy profession in Nigeria, and how ready are you as an individual member of the accountancy profession? So let's look back. In 2022, uh, PAFA uh, did a report uh, with um, ACCA and PWC. And this report considered the state of the profession in Africa. And I'm sure these slides will, will be shared with you and you can download the report. But I wanna share with you a little bit about um, what we found Africa versus Nigeria as it relates to the ESG agenda. And remember my question to you, how ready is the accountancy profession? How ready is the accountant? And all of this against the backdrop of Nigeria being a first adopter of the IFRS sustainability disclosure standards. So first question, how is the accountancy profession contributing to the ESG agenda? In 2022, the respondents to the survey focused on financial reporting, financial reporting on climate issues, right? Mm -hmm. Interestingly, in Africa, 44% selected that as an area of contribution, while in Nigeria, already 49% made that selection. Also, talking about skills gaps in the accountancy profession, particularly as business environment evolves, right? Again, looking at financial reporting on climate issues. In Nigeria, 50% of respondents from Nigeria actually highlighted this as an emerging skills gap, while in Africa, only 39 selected it. Now, the data that really worried me the most from the report at the time was this third one, where the respondents were asked about the trends that are expected to have the biggest impact on the accountancy profession over the next decade. Now, remember the survey was conducted before um, Nigeria adopted the ISSB standards. Well, it was before the standards were issued, actually even before the ISSB was established, right? So 
In the Horn of Africa, only 16% of respondents thought that increasing attention to ESG is a trend that will have a really significant impact on the accountancy profession in the next decade. Nigeria came out better, but still very low, only 24%. So we also ask a question about what is limiting the accountancy profession's involvement in the ESG agenda. And when we look at Nigeria, 60% of respondents from Nigeria said the country yet to embrace the agenda, and 55% said lack of understanding. Now, of course, you have now surpassed country yet to embrace the agenda because you are a fun front runner. With the adoption of the ISSB standards, you are now running ahead. What was the responses from Africa? 57% selected lack of understanding, 52% the difficulty to incorporate it with traditional roles, 51% selected inadequate knowledge and skills, and 47% country yet to embrace, embrace the agenda. So this is a little bit of a look back, but we can also see that already in 2022, as it relates to accountants for people, planet and prosperity, you, the accountant in Nigeria, were running ahead. So this, uh, you know, if you have listened to me before, you will know that I really like to say that accountants need to move from doing the same things to doing the same things differently but if you are an accountant for people, planet, prosperity, you need to do different things. But there is no need to be alarmed because many of the skills and competencies required to effectively use sustainability standards and frameworks are already in your toolkit. Your background and experience with financial and also frequently non-financial reporting means you already know how to develop, implement, execute against, or evaluate an internal control system. You already understand, develop, and execute processes to extract, synthesize, and interpret complete and accurate data. You evaluate impact of guidance to transactions, trends, and strategy. You already understand and report information that is transparent, relevant, and meaningful to a user. You understand and apply appropriate guidance to transactions and reporting. And you determine and use appropriate measures of materiality. So already you have a lot in your toolbox, right? And this slide was based on an IFAC article published in 2021. Now, I want to encourage you to look at a recently published um, IFAC article, Equipping Accountants for Sustainability, What's New and What Hasn't Changed. Again, in a similar fashion as this slide, it very clearly tells you under technical expertise, business acumen, behavioral competence, ethics and professional values, what is new? and what hasn't changed. So what can you already do and what do you need to learn to do? So I encourage you to take a look. So earlier on, I spent some time about your connection continentally, your connection internationally through Anand's membership of PAFA and IFAC. And throughout the presentation, I'm going to show you how you can harness this connection to develop yourself into an accountant for people, planet, and prosperity, right? So through the IFRS Foundation, you already have access to the sustainability disclosure standards. There are related developments, the ethics standards board, the auditing and assurance standards board, the public sector accounting standards board, and the international Pan panel on accountancy education are all doing work in sustainability that you need to be on top of, right? There's, there's really a lot of implementation resources. On the IFRS Foundation, you can find education material, but very important under education material, 
take a look at the knowledge hub because the knowledge hub really brings together um, information beyond the IFRS Foundation worldwide. Some free, some paid, but if you are interested in learning more about sustainability, take a look there. The IFRS Foundation has excellent capacity building initiatives. And then the, the next two, I just wanted to show how they're already developing technically, because now they have worked with Europe, because Europe has different standards to issue guidance on how these standards will coexist. And they've already completed a taxonomy. I encourage you to sign up for the IFAC Knowledge Gateway through that link. Again, access to a lot of information. But even at PAFA, uh, we have a gateway of resources. Please visit it often. There is a resource on sustainability. But for me, most exciting is the work that we are currently doing with the IFRS Foundation. Because we are a capacity building partner of the IFRS Foundation. And we are uh, with them and funding from FCDO in the UK. We are developing a strategy for PAFA. This strategy is focused on supporting professional accountancy organizations such as Anman and its members such as yourself in building the capacity necessary to support the adoption and the implementation of the IFRS sustainability disclosure standards. And over time, the center of excellence will also expand to cover all the things I've said at the top, ethics, auditing assurance, public sector, education, et cetera. And another project that we are currently considering is the development of a common core competency framework for Africa, right? One that is aspirational, one that will truly develop you as a future fit accountant. So let's continue. Accountants for people, planet and prosperity contribute to the fight against corruption and other economic crimes particularly relevant in the Africa context. Let's look for a moment at the Corruption Perceptions Index of 2023. Only 28 of 108 countries have improved their corruption levels over the last 12 years. And 34 countries have significantly worsened. And despite significant efforts, corruption levels remain stagnant globally. Now, this grave societal harm caused by grand corruption makes it a matter of international concern. And more importantly, a matter of concern to the accountancy profession. So what PAFA did in 2022, we issued a call on professional accountancy organizations. Uh, and this call was for them to develop strategies that support accountants for people, planet, and prosperity. And we included five areas in this call. One, we have already spoken about. We have already spoken about sustainability reporting and assurance. The next one is about fighting corruption and economic crime. We're going to talk a little bit more about that now. We also have the role of the accountancy profession in the public sector. I have not singled that out today just because uh, Anand is already advanced in this area. We have a fourth one that deals with the quality of accountancy services. And this one we will deal with maybe at a, a different webinar. And then another one that we will touch on today is also the role of the accountancy profession in realizing the Africa continental free trade area. So those were the five areas that we covered. So let's turn back to the fight against corruption and economic crimes. Corruption and related economic crime is a significant obstacle to realizing the African Union's Agenda 2063, and the United um, Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You, the accountants, the members of Anan, you are very well placed in business, the public sector, and society to help fight these crimes, right? For a moment, think about yourself in your business with your employee. You are the center. 
You work on matters affecting the whole organization. You have influence across the organization. So you can really lead on this fight against them. Um, corruption and economic crime. So also you as an accountant um, are well placed to support key actors and policymakers that strive to counter corruption and economic crime. And particularly Anan needs to be sure that it is sitting at the right tables where it can influence and make its voice heard. So coming back um, to, to these connections or partnerships. So Anan and you, the members of Anan, you need to be core anti-corruption contributors, right? And if we turn towards IFAC, we will find that IFAC has an action plan for fighting corruption and economic crime. And Anan, with you as its members, should really localize this action plan for Nigeria. And the focus should be on how do you harness education and professional development to fight corruption? How do, you, how do you use your support of global standards to get there? Another way of doing it is contributing to evidence-based policymaking or strengthening impact through engagement and partnership. So let me ask you, Anand, do you have a, re a relationship with the National Bar Association, right? Because when I think about um, anti-money laundering, and I'll get there in a moment, then accountants and lawyers actually play a key role, which helps if there is a relationship and if we can work together on these issues. And then again, how do you contribute expertise through thought leadership and advocacy? So all of that can be encapsulated in an Anan action plan for fighting corruption and economic crime. And I do know that you you did um, focus on this in the past. I'm aware of your anti-corruption day. So very proud of the activities that you have already undertaken in this regard. Let us also not forget about the ISPA code of ethics, particularly the non-compliance of law and regulation standard. And interestingly, we this is often followed by accountants in practice, but kind of forgotten by accountants in business and public sector. So please keep in mind that it applies across the board. And then one thing that we do understand is the importance of whistleblower protection legislation. And again, Anan is well positioned to influence conversations in this regard. So other areas um, where you can look um, is as it relates to anti-money laundering. So Nigeria, as you're aware, you were recently added to the FAT of Grey list. And um, interestingly, that the accountancy profession was mentioned in the top five recommendations, right? And it was the same for South Africa, but when you look at some of the others on the list, you don't necessarily find that. So really something for us and for you in Nigeria to be conscious about. And the, an easy way to get off the ground quickly is shared knowledge, learn from your peers. There are countries in Africa that got themselves off the list. So how do you learn from them, right? Again, you can gather more information through the IFAC God Knowledge Gateway. IFAC has a community of practice. PAFA has resources, and we will soon be establishing a community of practice. So let's move to our next topic. Accountants for People, Planet, and Prosperity contribute to the realization of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, or, or AFTA. Now, for me, when I first got engaged with the AFTA, I was really fearful, right? Because these conversations about trade can become technical very quickly, right? And if you are not an expert, it can be quite um, challenging. So why is it important? I told you already that PAFA has issued this call on professional accountancy organizations in Africa and that we include the role of the accountancy profession in realizing the AFTA as one of the five areas of focus. Why? Let's go back to the 2022 State of the Profession in Africa report that I referenced earlier. 
It was very clear in this report that stakeholders expect accountants to help realize Africa's growth objectives through the AFTA. And as I said earlier, can be quite worrisome because these um, conversations can be very technical. But for this reason, a year later, PAFA worked with ACCA on a report, Journey to AU 2063, Professional Accountants Empowering the AFTA, right? So really looking at the accountancy profession's role and, and what does it mean? And I encourage you to look at these reports, which I have linked there. So what is really beautiful in this Journey to AU 2063 report is that it refers to accountants as super connectors. Every time I read that word super connector, I actually feel like I have superpowers, right? Like I need a cape. As accountants, we need capes with our superpowers, right? So accountants are referenced as super connectors of key players in the after. Right. So think about it. We can be in the middle and we can connect business. That means the trade actors, finance, the bridge builders, professional services, the quality enablers, institutions, the oversight providers and policymakers and politicians, the ratifiers. Right. So we can really be a super connector of these key players. And if we want to make a significant contribution to the realization of the AFTA, we must overcome barriers to trade and enable these key players. And here on the slide, I have listed some of the barriers to trade um, more familiar to the accountancy profession or those where the accountancy profession can be more impactful. We won't go into, um, into detail today. This is maybe a topic for another webinar. But let's say again, connected, connected to Anan, connected to PAFA, connected to IFAC, right? At the local level, Anan has to be asked to have a seat at the negotiation table. Right? When there is negotiation around the after, what it means for the quality and mobility of accountancy services, you need to be there. You need to influence, right? What we are doing at the continental level, as we have looked at the, um, the PAFA ACCA report in detail, and we have identified what can PAFA best assist with, right? Through a lens of our comparative advantages, and we have established an ad hoc group of experts to help us to drill down into what this would look like in practice. So for us, even for us at PAFA, still early days. And all I can say is watch this space and hopefully we'll get together soon to talk more about this. I have two more for accountants for people, planet and prosperity. My second last one, you are technology enabled. Accountants for people, planet and prosperity are technology enabled. So for a moment, let's go back to the future of jobs report 2023, right? Technology remains a key driver of business transformation, right? Big data, cloud, cloud computing, AI features very high on the likelihood of adoption. E-commerce and dig digital trade will be adopted by 75% of businesses who participated in this report. So let's come back to job creation, job destruction. So we already said earlier, it's going to be driven by environment, technology, and economy, right? But as I said to you earlier, the impact of most technologies on jobs is expected to be net positive. So, you know, we always say, oh, the machine is going to take over our jobs. But if we make sure that we have the right skills, it can be net positive, even for us in the accountancy profession. Big data analytics, climate change, and environmental management technologies, and encryption and cybersecurity, are expected to be the biggest drivers of job growth. So for a moment, pause, let it sink in. Where are you in relation to B2B, 
big data analytics, climate change, and environmental management technologies, and encryption and cybersecurity. This is what's going to drive job growth. Where are you in this? There's also agriculture technologies, digital platforms and apps, e-commerce and digital trade, and IA that is expected to significantly disrupt the labor market. So interestingly, task automation, right? Machines versus human. It is expected that in 2027, it will be 35% of reasoning and decision-making and up to 65% of information and data processing. This next bullet, I really want you to think about it. You know, whenever we talk about machine versus human, machine versus accountant, as accountants, we are very quick to say, no, 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 professional judgment, all these things, only humans can do it. But look at this report, reasoning, communicating, and coordinating all trades with a comparative advantage for humans, those that we normally say as humans, we have, as accountants, we have, therefore we won't be overtaken by machines, is to be more automatable in the future, right? And AI is expected to be adopted by nearly 75% of the surveyed organizations. I want to talk a little bit more about AI. The fastest growing roles are technology related. And now they look at fewer jobs. So there will be 26 million fewer jobs by 2027. But remember, this is just the job destruction, right? I did say that if you look at the job creation, there's going to be a net positive. But 27 million fewer jobs by 2027 in record keeping and administrative roles including accounting and bookkeeping, right? So really important that we, as accountants for people, planet and prosperity, start shifting. So let's talk for a moment about artificial intelligence. I'm sharing with you an interesting report by the Institute of Management Accountants, the impact of artificial intelligence on accounting and finance, a global perspective. And then this report was actually um, included in an article by Susie, uh, and this um, deals with um, AI and, and accounting. So, so let's look at the progression. In the report, the IMA report, they talk about weak AI and artificial intelligence, strong AI and super AI. Today, what we are seeing is weak AI. So it performs tasks faster than humans, but in a pre-programmed context, and it is capable of stimulating creative innovation. But there are future, there are conceptual models, strong AI. AI with intelligence capabilities, similar to a human's capabilities. But look at super AI, AI that surpasses human intelligence, right? That's what's coming. So I like Susie's advice in her article, right? She says, what should accountants do? We should have a solid understanding of data. Make sure we understand that data, that we understand data, that we have strong data skills, because that's what feeds AI and that's what we are using to interpret results. But number two is my favorite. Be curious, have an open mind and be open to change and find every opportunity to learn. I'm at the end. Accountants for people, planet, and prosperity can adapt. So if you think about everything we've said, we have to, we must adapt, and we can. So quick look again at the future of jobs report. 44% of workers' skills will be disrupted in the next five years. Cognitive skills will be growing in importance. Six in 10 workers will require training. The highest priority for skills training, analytical thinking, creative thinking, using AI and big data. And employers plan to focus on developing workers skills in leadership and social influence, resilience, flexibility and agility, curiosity 
and my favorite, lifelong learning. And lifelong learning is our responsible, not a tick box compliance approach, but an approach that is relevant, that is reflective, and that helps us grow and continue to grow as accountants for people, planet, and prosperity. I want to leave you with the top 10 attributes and skills in 2023. We take a quick look at what it will look like in 2027, but we already spoke about analytical thinking, creative thinking, resilience, flexibility, and agility, motivation, self-awareness, curiosity, and lifelong learning, technology, technological literacy, dependability and attention to detail, empathy, active listening, leadership and social influence, and quality control. As I go through this, right, I've trained as an accountant many, many years ago. Some of these I have picked up through my career. None of them I was actually taught in detail or I learned during my training, right? So something to reflect on. So let's quickly look at 2027. You can see some moves. Number three, AI and big data. Leadership and social influence now moved up to number four. And in at number eight, we have design and user experience. So this is what I'm leaving you with, colleagues. Remain curious as you continue to grow as accountants for people, planet, and prosperity. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Back to you, colleagues at Anand. Thank you very much, Ma, for the excellent presentation. I once again want to thank you for honoring our invitation. Just a quick recap of what you have said, and uh, is the fact that you have encouraged uh, Anna to be committed to sustainability, relevancy, and credibility, which is very important and germane in order for us to continue to move forward in this association. Also, you try as much as possible to uh, make reference to PAFA and NIFA uh, and NIFAC as a gateway for the fact that uh, we are belong to continental uh, organization, which is uh, POAs. And also, you may brief about PAFA, uh, which is one of the organs that we belong to, ASANA, where we are talking about 15 members. 56 member organization in 45 countries, which is uh, we we are we we are very happy that one of the uh, leading members of such organization. Uh, we define the strategic uh, plans and strategic objective for PAFA, which we should take note at the same time we run with the vision, so that at the end of the day we are attuned with the what development that is going on within our environment. Then you move forward that to encourage your attractants to the fact that they play this particular role in fighting what you call corruption so that economic crime, economic crime. And uh, it is important that in fact that you refer to the fact that Anna has played a very good, uh, good role in this aspect by observing what you call anti-corruption day. And then you make reference to that. And I can assure you that we are playing a very good role to make sure that we are around here to support the government in order to move these, the hands of government forward. And then we move forward to the, the, the fact that we encourage you to, to contribute to realization of African trade agreements. We should also participate actively so that we can also contribute, and so, so that we can contribute to the development uh, as we move forward. Uh, you also talk about technology driven which is very important in order to achieve this objective of accountants for, uh, for, uh, for people, for planet and prosperity, that whatever we are doing right now is driven by what we call technology. And then if, if we are to achieve our objective, we should make sure that we work towards uh, developing our skill in this area so that at the end of the day, we know how to analyze data and especially big data how to also look at the contribution of recorded technologies, and then at the end of the day, we can also deal with the issue of artificial intelligence, which by all standards, uh, 
we are expecting in the near future, what is going to happen is the fact that those who don't have the knowledge in this area, we may have some problem because of this disruption, because of disruption of art artificial intelligence. And uh, you made also made mention finally that there are certain skills that we must possess. And this we assist us to make sure we achieve this objective uh, perfectly. And one of these things you emulated them, uh, about 10 of them, for a good accountant to protest. Analytical uh, thinking, creative thinking, resilience, agility, motivation and self-awareness, and be curious to make sure that we are moving with what is going on in the world. Thank you very much once again, and we appreciate you for coming to this program. And we believe next time when we call you, you answer up. Hand over to the to the chief executive of, of the Association of Iron Academy of Nigeria in order to pilot their fear for that. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Father Ray, our director of education and training. Let me once again uh, thank Alta. Of course, uh, I'm not um, surprised uh, because uh, this has been your passion, accountant for planet prosperity and for the people. Um, I want to also quickly say to you that um, if you don't mind, you know this is a Zoom uh, broad broadcast and it was recorded. So we will also like you to know that immediately after this webinar, we are going to take the recording and post on all our platforms so that people that are not able to join now can join. Actually, there are a lot of, um, there are some network challenge that kept putting people out and didn't allow us to have more than 100 people at the same time. So we're going to post it immediately. I'm sure probably my president will want to say something, sir. Mr. President, sir. Because I know Alta is, um, if she has another meeting immediately. Uh, I don't know whether we can take one or two questions, but uh, before that, I'll let my president say something. Uh, my Mr. It's president, just, sir. It's just to thank uh, Alta Prislow. She's really made Africa proud, particularly the accounting profession. Indeed, like you say, it's our passion. And we have in really been enriched by this uh, lecture. And just to say thank you. Uh, maybe we might be interacting much more because I know my, and then particularly the each we had here, some of our people were locked out from uh, the webinar. Out of about 400 persons who registered, only 11, I mean 100 of them uh, were able to join and others were locked out. So we will please plead with you uh, in the very near future we we'll take another uh, webinar from you. Thank you, and we did appreciate you. Thank you, ma'am. Very welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, although the, the, your topic is not um, is not a debatable topic, it's a topic that is that you are the original owner of the topic. So <laughs> we'll not be able to be asking questions and answering on it. But let me just say that I want to thank you very much. Um, for your presentation today. And like I said, um, like somebody is quoting here, say, remain curious. Uh, if you remain curious, you want to learn more. And the more curious you are, the more better, I mean, the better you become as a person. Uh, we're not going to take your time because of your next meeting, which is exactly probably in the next three minutes. I want to say thank you very much. And um, rest assured, uh, you, our next plan, our next engagement with you should be October. But uh, <laughs> if we have to bring you before October, we'll bring you before October. But we know that we already scheduled you for October for the physical interaction with a member. We're very grateful to you. Thank you very much. And have a great day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. As I said, Anan is definitely one of my favorite PAOs. I'm so inspired by your vibrancy. Stay curious <laughs> until we talk again. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.